And welcome back to the Sportsman's Club here at Rockingham Park. Our feature bout, Tommy, is we have the World Athletic Association Championship bout between Danny Mad Dog Mason and Gene Reed. Danny, of course, out of Belmont. Reed out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And, of course, it is the international championship between these two at 135 pounds. And Reed is already a champion. He owns the IBC lightweight title as well. But he didn't want to give up that belt. He wanted to fight that in his backyard in Pennsylvania. Now, how much of an advantage do you think that Mr. Mad Dog has fighting here in his backyard? Obviously, being in his home turf, it, it certainly should help. Well, let me tell you how much of an advantage Gene Reed's people think that he has. They were not going to come to this fight unless they got a guarantee that at least one of the three judges would not be from New Hampshire. Of course, judging in boxing, always an interesting <laughs> thing to figure out. Of course, it figures to go the distance, Tommy. Neither one of these guys with a lot of power or knockout position. Oh, but Reed hasn't fought a southpaw in about five years, so he's going to have to adjust to that. And I think what he's going to try to do is to frustrate Danny Mad Dog Mason's momentum, frustrate him, try to slow him down on his own turf. You know Mason can take a pounding, and he's going to come out strong. All right, according to Bobby Stevens, the commissioner of the New Hampshire Boxing Commission, this is the first championship fight in New Hampshire history, and it's coming up next as we'll take a timeout right now. We've got Danny Mad Dog Mason for the World Athletic Association against Gene Reed of Philadelphia. We'll be back with more Friday Night at the Fights on the Winds right after this. And welcome back to Rockingham Park as we get set for our headline bout scheduled for 12 rounds as Gene Reed out of Philadelphia, actually Scranton, Pennsylvania, fighting out of Philadelphia. Irish Gene Reed makes his descent into the ring and of course Danny Mad Dog Mason about to enter the ring with the traditional headdress. And he is a warrior, Tom, in the true sense of the word in terms he is of boxing. Part, he is part Indian as well. And that's why he wears the headdress. Mason, we've seen before. We've had him on our cards here on WNDS TV, and he's fought here at Rockingham Park before. He is what's known as a brawler. He will just mix it up. He won't back up at all. On the other hand, you've got Reed in the opposite corner, who's more of a boxer, Tommy. He's into the science of boxing. He sticks, he moves, he uses combinations. So it's an interesting matchup. On one hand, the boxer. On the other hand, the brawler. Reed's experience is going to come into play here. Danny Mason has had a history, as we talked about this off air, of being able to take a lot of punishment during a fight, especially a 12-round fight. But Gene Reed is a smart fighter. If he sees an opening, he is going to take it. I don't think Mason does Reed. Reed has fought 20 fights. He's only had about four or five, four knockouts in 21 fights. Not, I mean, that's not a good percentage. 22 fights for Mason, only three knockouts. So well, you're talking two fighters without a lot of power in terms of knocking out an opponent. You're talking over 40 fights and just seven KOs. Now the tape being applied. You can tell, you can hear the buzz from the, from the crowd. You can tell that this is the fight that everyone came to see. I tell you, it's always fun to see Mad Dog climb into the ring with that headdress. <laughs> he puts on a show. He came all the way down a, across the press table and waving his gloves and came right back up and in. And Reed, as you see, he's got the uh, Irish colors on. That's why they call him Irish Gene. He's got the flag of Ireland on his trunks. I'll tell you one thing, both these guys in terrific shape right now. Let's go up to the ring for our announcement an introduction of our main event here on Friday night at the Fights at the Winds. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived for the main event of the evening. This is a 12-rounder for the World Athletic Association Lightweight Championship Belt. And here with me, all the way from Kentucky, is the Kentucky Athletic Commissioner of the WAA World Athletic Association. Please welcome Mr. Todd Neal. Mr. Neal. Before we introduce the boxers, it is my pleasure this evening to welcome a guest judge 
all the way from Hawaii. Boxing fans, he is the former manager of three-time world champion, Alexis Aguayo. Please welcome Mr. Bill Miller. Also judging this fight will be Judge Peter Burkish and Judge James Finnegan. The referee for this 12-rounder is Mr. Mark Landry. Speed and up. now, introducing in the blue corner, he comes all the way from Scranton, Pennsylvania. He weighs in at 135 pounds with a 15 and 5 record. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Irish Gene Reed. And his opponent, fresh out of the dog pound with a 12. Eight and one record in the red corner. He hails from Belmont, New Hampshire. Three knockouts to his credit. He tipped the scales at 134 pounds. Please welcome Danny Mad Dog Mason. Mad Dog Mason getting a nice response from the hometown crowd Tommy and as always the warrior with the game face on the warrior with the game face but Mr. Reed got what he wanted as you heard John B with the introduction the judge from Hawaii Bill Miller our guest former manager of election. Gene Reed with the Irish trunks green white and orange and of course Mad Dog with the red and black trunks Getting some last-minute instructions. Mad Dog, of course, the current New England lightweight champ. We're scheduled for 12, a championship for the World Athletic Association lightweight title. This bout on the line tonight. All right, Reed with a perfect haircut. Looks like an actor. Neat cropped. I wonder if he'll be that way at the end of the fight. Well, right now... Both fighters going through an obvious feeling out period in the early portions of round one. Of course, you can expect Mad Dog to press the action as he's all business in the ring. And there's usually not too much inactivity when Mad Dog's in a he'll, fight. He'll want to get some body blows in as soon as possible. Reed will try to avoid that and dance around. Try to frustrate Mad Dog Mason as much as possible. That's what his manager, Doug Long, told us earlier in the week would be the strategy. David Gates, the manager of Mad Dog Mason, feels his boxer has great endurance and will wear opponents down. He said, quote, from the eighth round on, his opponent better be in shape. So we'll keep that in mind as this fight wears on. Again, we're in round one, scheduled for 12 for the lightweight championship of the World Athletic Association. Now, Reed looks like he's in good shape. Reed looks to be in good shape. Mad Dog looks to be in tremendous condition. Not an ounce of fat on that guy. This is as serious as I have seen Mad Dog Mason for a fight in a long time. Again, this is his title fight. This is what he's wanted for a long time. Well, this is the fight that could set up a big money bout for Mad Dog. I mean, if he wins this title, he's got an opportunity to perhaps fight some bouts that could bring him some big paydays, considering what he's made up to this point in his career. Mad Dog, of course, as our fans know, who are familiar with him, out of boxing for six years, returned to the ring three years ago. Look at the concentration. If viewers can see that in Reed's face. Doesn't take his eye off the target for a second. A crafty, smart fighter. There's the frustrating part. He's going to hug Mason and push away. Best punch for Reed is the left hook. Mad Dog, on the other hand, his best punch, a straight left hand. And again, neither fighter a knockout artist by any means. Reed is 32 years old. Mad Dog is 31. 
So really no differential, no, no age all. factor at all. The referee for this bout is Mark Landry out of Maine. And so far he hasn't had much to do. It's been a very clean fight. We he haven't won't. had any clinches. He won't for the first couple of rounds. And that's the end of round one. We are scheduled for 12. It's the WAA and chip bout between Mad Dog Mason and Irish Gene Reed. We'll be right back. And welcome back as we get set for round number three. Oh, you heard the, the instructions. Doug Long saying to Gene Reed, the boxing ain't working. It is right. rumbling. He's gonna, and that, ladies and gentlemen, means that they have surrendered one thing. They are going to fight Mason's fights. They are going to rumble and brawl with Danny Mason. And that's, of course, his style. He is a brawler. So that's one concession right there. We'll see whether it works out for Reed's corner or not. Mason a little off balance there. You're right though, Reed's face a picture of concentration. Oh. He's gonna have to do more than concentrate now. Mason warned him of that when that straight left landed in the second round. This is a fight, Rich, where one punch lands in a round. It's a major blow because there aren't a lot of combinations yet early on in this fight. Mad Dog, of course, since beginning his comeback, 13-4 and four under the tutelage of David Gates to this point. And, of course, this is certainly the biggest bout of his pro career and of his comeback. And he gets the advantage of fighting in his backyard here in Salem, New Hampshire at beautiful Rockingham Park. They really, they really wanted Gene Reed for this fight, too. They picked him out, studied him closely. These fighters exchange tapes, by the way. That's and that's very, very, very unusual. Very unusual in boxing. Because otherwise they would have gone into this fight knowing absolutely nothing about one another other than what they could find out from other trainers and managers in boxing. But they don't have any history as amateurs. They certainly have no history before tonight as professionals. And again, that is really unusual for two fighters about to fight for a title to exchange tapes. I think Reed's, I think Reed's camp more or less demanded it. They knew they could write their own ticket to come here. They got their judge, they got their tapes. Of course, that also helps Mad Dog because he gets to take a look at Reed and break down his abilities and his weaknesses. Much like Reed's people did with Mad Dog. It's been relatively even so far here. We are in round number three, scheduled for 12. This is the World Athletic Association Lightweight Championship fight between Danny Mad Dog Mason with the Mohawk and Irish Gene Reed, who fights out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Now they're liking what Reed's doing with his combinations, trying to get a couple in there. Using them. They're waiting for him to use the left hook. Now both guys about the same height and pretty much equal in reach, Tommy. So neither fighter, maybe Mad Dog with an inch or two in extension, but not much. The quick left hand from Mad Dog. Reed, though, it looks like he has trouble punching on the fly. Let's see, he plants his feet and then lets go. That's the end of round number three. It's Friday night at the fights on your sports source, WNDS-TV. We'll be right back. Buckingham Park, as you look at Danny Mad Doug Mason and Irish Gene Reed. By the way, Tommy, if you get a little warm tonight, we're close enough to Reed's corner that some of that water they're splashing on is coming down our way. <laughs> so if you get warm, just stick your head out a little bit, and you'll cool you right down. This is the first time we've done these fights behind someone's corner. This is round four. We are scheduled for 12. Just underway here in round number four. Mad Dog trying to land the right hand there. Ooh, Reed almost a low blow on Mad Dog. Got to watch out. Of course, LaPlante's not in the ring now, so I don't know how strict things will be. Well, I would think Mark Landry would be just as strict as Mr. LaPlante. 
And of course, there's a lot at stake in this bout. Mad Dog, by the way, makes a living splitting wood. And it is also part of his training. He's, and if for those of you who have a fireplace, this guy splits about a quart of wood a day with his hands. He doesn't use a machine. He uses an old-fashioned axe, and that's what he does all day. He splits oh, wood. I, I thought he didn't use the axe either. He just used his hands. <laughs> Pretty interesting when your job is also part of your training. It's the way to do it. Original hometown for Mad Dog is Morrisville, Vermont. And of course now fighting out of Belmont, New Hampshire. Of course Mason would like to make this his job. With a win here, as you say, get himself into a big money fight. Reed going to the body with the right hand. Mad Dog does not discourage easily, but he's going to need all his gumption here tonight against what looks to be a very tough fighter in Gene Reed, and Reed using some combinations. Good left hand from Mad Dog snapped Reed's head back. And then Reed wades in and gets in a few body blows. Action picking up here in round number four. Just right on schedule. Maybe a round earlier than I thought. But that's because of Reed's decision to come at him and brawl with Mason rather than just try to box him. It'll be interesting as this fight wears out, Tommy, to see if that strategy is indeed the right move for Gene Reed. Well, then you get into a conditioning factor and a strength factor. You take the smarts and throw them out the window and it won't matter at all. It's going to be who lands the blows. Stable mate Joe LaRue is one of the main sparring partners for Mad Dog Mason. I'd love to watch those two fight. I really would love to watch those two fight. So far, most of this fight being fought right in the middle of the ring. And that's the end of the fourth round. Scheduled for 12. We'll step away and be back with more Friday Night in the Fights on The Winds, WNDS-TV, TV50. And welcome back as we look at some action from round four, Tommy. All right, watch the left combination by Reed, and there's the right, right over Mason's head. He ducks. Again, just part of the feeling out process. They're still doing it, even into round five. This is round number five. The World Athletic Association Lightweight Championship belt on the line as Danny Mad Dog Mason would like to put a notch in his belt. He is, of course, the New England lightweight champ. And again, this would be a stepping stone to bigger paydays for Mad Dog. At least that's the way David Gates, his manager, feels. Reed, meanwhile, would like to defend that other title he has, the IBC lightweight title that he won last August, fight it on his home turf. And why not? He's got the title, make them come to him. Reed, interestingly enough, is also a trainer. Very popular in the Scranton area. He has 18 kids that he trains in Golden Gloves, and that includes two in the state finals. So it's interesting that a guy who's got quite a bit of professional experience has a side job as a trainer. Obviously, we know what his future lies after retirement. Well, we're going to see that later on in the car with one of the other fighters, Alex Ortiz. He's also a trainer. Pretty good right hand there from Mason. And then that left, that straight left hand. Things have picked up considerably over the last round and a half or so. Round four and here in round five. Again, a lot more action than the first three. Or just about halfway through round number five. Mason with a clench and tried to land a couple of body blows before Landry separated them. He's trying for the back a little bit. Trying for the body. Iris Jean, meanwhile, is trying to put together some combinations. There is one right there. You can hear those, those blows land. And yet Mad Dog doesn't slow down or stop his assault. He, he never feels it. 
He never feels it. He always well, he goes feels it. it but he always goes the distance. He'll feel it tomorrow. His weakness is his style. Less than a minute now remaining here in round number five. Pretty even so far, Tommy, although maybe Reed coming on a bit here in the fifth round. They want to see more combinations. This corner wants more punches, more combos. Mason is, 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 is swinging more right now than Reed. There's one right there. Reed trying to land the uppercut. Pretty good combination that time from Reed. And then he goes right back at Mason and actually backed him up a bit. That's it. That's the end of round number five. And a good finish for Gene Reed out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. We'll be right back with more from our headline championship bout after these messages. And welcome back as we are getting set for round number six. And at the end of this round, we'll be halfway through our scheduled 12 rounds for the World Athletic Association lightweight title. All right, somebody wound Mason up. Look at this. And he's right coming at him. right after Reed. And he had him backed up into the ropes. He came right out and went way right out. And I think he surprised Reed, Tommy, with the force of the attack at the start of oh, round that's six. About, it. about a split second after the bell rang. The crowd into it too. For the first time really in this bout. You heard the chant of Mad Dog. Again, this is round number six. Mad Dog last fought on April the 7th on the ESPN card that was held here. Top ranked boxing coming to the Sportsman's Club here at Rockingham Park. He beat Francisco Cruz in a four round decision. Split decision that night. A fight that really I don't think Mason took very seriously. Certainly not the way he's approached this one here tonight. I'll tell you though, he came out awfully fast to start this round and then all of a sudden the tank, I think the tank emptied a little bit. Well, I think maybe he's also conserving some too. But he did catch Reed by surprise right at the start of the sixth round. Reed backed up against the ropes and just took a look at him as if to say, what got into you? It's been a good fight so far. And certainly the last three rounds, things have really picked up. Let him go, let him go. Break it clean, break it clean. Get off, get off. Come on, get busy. Get busy. Doug Long, the manager for Gene Reed, telling Reed from his corner to get busy. We're sitting right next to Reed's corner. We can hear just about every word they say. They want him to be more aggressive in this fight. There's no question about that. Tell you a great audio from the ring. You can hear every instruction at home. Mad Dog just flicking the left jab out there. Now this is round number six, and you remember, as I mentioned earlier, David Gates saying, oh, "Here we go, there you go." As Reed is backed up into the ropes. Wow, what a finish to round number six, Mad Dog, with a great finish. We'll be back. We're halfway through. We're scheduled for twelve. We'll be right back. And welcome back for round number seven. Let's Mad see if it Dog starts Mason. out. Let's see if it starts out the way round six did, or the way round six ended. Finished. Yeah, it's Mad Reed. Dog with a strong start and finish to the last round. You know what I liked about Reed was he wasn't really he was backed in and pushed a little bit, but he still kept swinging. He wasn't covering up. He Reed in hurting. the 
white, green, and orange trunks. Now Reed, look at that. Reed is trying to brawl now with Mason. There you see it right there, wild combinations. That's not Gene Reed's style. But obviously his managers and trainers feel he needs to force the action here. Uh, he's gonna have to, you know why Richie's on the fighter's home turf. Well, as you mentioned earlier, it certainly helps Mad Dog that Reed is gonna fight his fight. Get into a brawl with him. Well, let's take a look at the end of the fight and see the concerns that the Reed camp had. Let's see if the out-of-town judge is the only one who voted for Reed through the, through the fight. Mad Dog backed up against the ropes, right in front of us. There's a good left by Reed, a good right by Mason, and that a combination. Good exchange between the two, both landing some solid blows and scoring. And again, this is a title fight for the lightweight title belt of the WAA. The winner goes home with a pretty nice prize there, Tommy. Yeah, it looked pretty good to me. WAA, by the way, the World Athletic Association has been around since the early 80s. Sean O'Grady was the first title holder. His father, Pat O'Grady, was the one who started the association. How come they get to keep the belt? And we don't get to keep the tuxes. Mad Dog looked like he was stunned and may be in trouble. Mad Dog looks like he's hurt. And now he just tries to hang on. I'm not sure. I think Reed, Reed landed a left uppercut and that knocked Mad Dog a little bit off his feet. No question, Mad Dog was hurt there. His nose appears to be bleeding. He's starting to bleed from the nostrils. Looks like the right nostril. And Reed certainly getting the better of the latter portion here in round number seven. Mad Dog starting to look tired as well. I think he's dazed. I think he's a little dazed, Rich. And he's in trouble. Good right hand from Reed. Reed, you can see, looking for that one big punch. And that's the end of round number seven. A big round for Irish Gene Reed. We'll be back with more of Championship Boxing on the win. And let's take a look at that action, Tommy, at the tail end of round number seven. There is the left, right there to Dave Mason. And Mason doing a good job to hang on through the remainder of that round. He was in some trouble. And a right to the head and another right up on the chin. So a combination of punches by Gene Reed, which is what his manage managers wanted, combos. This is the beginning of round number eight. Again, David Gates, the manager for Mad Dog, saying from round eight on, his opponent better be in shape. Well, I'll tell you, after seven rounds, so better Mad Dog. You wonder how much energy that quick start in round five took. I think when these guys are gonna end up getting their second and perhaps their third wins before this bout is through. Well, Reed obviously is going to try to connect again on that cut under the nostrils. But for the first time tonight in the card, no eye injuries yet. Yep, both fighters nice and clean up top. And really the only cut at all that Blood uh, trickling just a little bit at the tail end of the last round from Mad Dog. This is round number eight. We are scheduled for 12. And now the chant of Mad Dog comes up from the crowd. <laughs> Just about halfway through round number eight. And again, a little blood trickling from the nostril of Mad Dog Mason. Come on, fight it out, fight it out, let him go, let him go. 
Since early in this bout, Tommy, the best punch for Mad Dog, we haven't seen much. That straight left hand, we saw it early in uh, rounds two and three, but not much since then. Not the second round when he landed that, and then that flurry to start round five. That's been it. And it it's bleeding, he is bleeding again from the nostrils. A little bit more than la the last round. Yeah, Reed is one solid punch away from really doing some damage. A couple of right hands by Mad Dog. He flicked a couple of straight rights. And Reed goes to work again. 30 seconds remaining here in round number eight. And Gene Reed applying some pressure to Mad Dog Mason. Great, great, great. Watch your head. Watch your head. Come on, this is where your experience picks up later on. Let's go. Oh, Mad Dog just missing with a left hand. A glancing blow. I think I saw Reed heave a sigh of relief with that. He should have if he didn't, because if that punch landed, he would have been in trouble. And that's the end of round number eight. We have four rounds remaining. We'll be back with more on the wins. It's Friday night at the fights. And welcome back here for round number nine. This is our main event, the World Athletic Association lightweight title belt on the line. Gene Reed and Danny Mad Dog Mason. And I would say to this point, Tommy, through eight rounds, I've got to have Gene Reed ahead. I've got to, too, include, you know, mostly based on that seventh round. The flurry that he had, the uppercut, and the left hand that landed and knocked Mason around. Mason looks like he's got more damage than Reed does right now. Let's see if Mad Dog can find that second win. He's been a tired and hurt fighter, especially in round number eight. Tell you, Rich, so if this fight goes the distance, I really will be interested in the judges' uh, scoring and who, which judge uh, declares who the winner. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a split decision in this. Mad Dog has certainly done some scoring of his own, but Reed, the last three to four rounds, except for that flurry really in the fifth round by Mad Dog, has pretty much controlled the action and flow. And he's certainly done more scoring in the last three or four rounds. And, in, and you know, it's more impressive, too, because he's done it fighting the other fighter's fight, if you can understand that. He's, he's fought the he's fight. He's not a brawler. He's, and he's a boxer. Doing, but he's doing it. That's right. He's brawling. The boxer is brawling. He's doing it very well. I don't know. Fight. Let him go, Danny. Danny, let him go. There you see or here, ref, referee Mark Landry. Reed, another combo. As he's backing up, Tom. He's telling you, he did that earlier. That round that ended with him against the ropes, he still was swinging while he was falling backwards. Mad Dog looking a little out of sync right now. But now the strategy is paying off. Now Reed is frustrating Mason, and that's what ultimately they wanted. They just took a different way to get there. About a minute remaining here in round number nine. And I would say that Mad Dog Mason is going to need to find something over the last three rounds of this fight to pull out a decision. Something we haven't seen recently in this bout, at least the last three or four rounds, because Gene Reed has carried the action and done the vast majority of the scoring. They say his best punch is his left hook, but I love the uppercuts. Of course, we know Mad Dog's a warrior. Yeah, the body blows really don't do the trick against Mad Dog. But they do score points. And that's the most important thing. And now Reed's corner up and shouting instructions. Oh, they can taste this. They really can taste this, Rich. There's the end of round number nine. All the momentum is with Gene Reed right now. All right, we'll be back for round number 10, championship boxing from the rock. And welcome back as we look at some action from round number nine. Right, here's the combinations that Reed is trying to put together. He tries with the right, he tries with the left. Back in with the left. Stunning Mason a little bit. Uh, keeping up the attack. This he is, is the aggressor in this fight right now. This is round number 10. We are scheduled. <laughs> Watch out. You never know what may land on this table. 
piece of ice just went right up my sleeve. <laughs> but again, this is round number 10. And yeah, they want him to use his left more. You can hear the, the instructions. Great audio tonight by our sound crew. As well as camera work from our TV50 sports crew. Reed's corner just wants to keep him on his toes. Just keep his aggression going. Do you think at this point, Tommy, they feel they're far enough ahead to just stick You are never far enough ahead when you are on the road in the ring. Never. So they want Reed to use the left hand and continue to press the action. They know that Mason really doesn't have knockout power. They feel they can take the chance. Danny's fought a tough fight. He's probably the toughest opponent he's ever faced. I would agree with that. Reed, a very crafty, smart boxer who's had to switch styles tonight and fight the fight of his opponent. And he's done it very effectively as we are here in round number 10. Again, the World Athletic Association lightweight title belt on the line. It's vacant at the moment. Not for long. I was just going to say, in a few minutes, one of these gentlemen will be wearing it. That dog has had trouble mounting any real offense, Tommy, in recent rounds. Well, he's had to watch out. He's had to fight a defensive fight ever since that flurry by Reed in round seven. Again, they want the uppercuts too for Reed now, as you can hear them. There's a couple of good shots and a good body blow. Now Reed has a chance here to just push him into a corner. He didn't take advantage of it. I thought he had Mason right there. And he backed away. Mason, very, very tough. Mason, however, in some trouble right now. Reed with a good right hand, and the round comes to a close. Two rounds remaining. We'll be back with more of Friday Night at the Fights on your sports source, WNDS. And welcome back as we take a look at that punch that almost put Mr. Mason down there. Yeah, there he is. He, there's the knee buckling right there. I don't know if that was a punch or a slip, but his knee buckled, and that got Reed at the opening he needed to finish with a flurry. Round number 11. We are scheduled for 12 in time winding down on Mad Mason's Dog Mason. Do this. He's got to come out strong the way he did earlier in the fight. He's got to come out and he's got to make some things happen, Tommy. And he's got to do it in a hurry. He's got less than six minutes remaining in this fight. And I know Gene Reed is on the road, but right now I would have Reed comfortably ahead on points. I would agree. But again, you never know. That's why we announce and they're the judges. <laughs> oh, good left by Reed. You can hear it land. Reed has consistently landed the crisper shots, and certainly they've been a lot more numerous than Mad Dog. Now Mason has a choice here. He can either try to slow it down to a crawl and hope that he wins on, get something out of points, or I, he's just going to have to take a chance and come right at him. I think he realizes that he's probably not going to win this fight on points at this point. He's got to know. Well said. <laughs> There's a body blow now. They like that. The corner loves that. Again, this is round 11. We are scheduled for 12. Come on, Chief. Come on, Chief. Get hungry. Come on. Oh, another combination. Reed just continues. Come on, Chief. 
to have it his way. Are you surprised, Rich? And Mad Reed... Dog stumbled right there. Are you surprised at the way Reed has been able to keep this up for the last five rounds? Very much so. He's come in here in great shape. He has continued to press the attack. He has not backed off at all. And I've been very, very impressed with Irish Gene Reed here this evening. He has fought a terrific fight. Again, Reed is 32, Mad Dog is 31. David Gates talked about the conditioning from the eighth round on. Oh, the opening and now, right the right hand from Reed Mad again. Dog, Mad Dog dropped his guard and Reed landed two balls. Pressing the attack and picking his spots. This guy has not let up. When he when I thought he might let up, he hasn't. He's kept right, he's kept the attack going. Continually looking for the opening and finding it more often than not. This is round number 11, one round remaining after this one. And Reed's corner wants him to finish the job. And that's the end of round 11. One round remaining for Danny Mad Dog Mason and Irish Gene Reed. We'll take a break and be back with our final round right after this. And welcome back. This is the final and 12th round between Mad Dog Mason and Gene Reed. Even the fans agree with us, Rich, from behind us. They said, fight smart, Gene. He's got to knock you out to win this fight. Came from the gallery behind us. Maybe members of his family. Either way, Reed has certainly Either way, they're been right. very <laughs> impressive. Either way, they're correct. Mad Dog has to find a way somehow to get Reed in trouble here in this 12th round. Something he's been unable to do and something, well, he's been in trouble more, more often than not tonight himself. It's got to be disappointing for Mad Dog Mason. Of course, Reed can't get careless. Oh, good body punch right thing. there by Reed. Now that's the thing. You just stay away from him and, and know you're going to win the fight on points, but he's not. He's coming right back at him. He wants to finish him off. Look at that left. Body blows. Look, he's not stopping. Again, both fighters have to be very, very tired here in this 12th and final round. Come on, Gino, lock it in there, lock it in there. Come on, stick that chair. Come on, Gino, what a combination. And you can just see the fatigue on Mad Dog. Reed looking much fresher here in the final round. Stick it, stick it, stick it. Come on, Gino. Now this corner yells, step it, which means dance around a little. And of course, Mad Dog needs to press the attack and make something happen, Tommy, and I don't know if he has the energy left to do it. I think, unfortunately for his fans, it's too late. Reed continuing to press the attack with another good combination. Good left hand from Reed. And you can see the fatigue on both fighters. Reed landing a right and a left. Tried the uppercut there, but missed. Both guys very, very tired, Tommy, as they should be at the it's conclusion been, of this one. It's been a long 12 rounds, but a lot longer for Danny Mason than Gene Reed. Now he's just going to run around the ring. Watch this. Watch this. That's it. It's all over as we'll wait the official decision. It's the World Athletic Association Lightweight Championship belt. We'll find out who will be wearing it when we come back. <laughs>